Every now and again I get the question, why do you draw in your unusual effects onto your posters? Wouldn't it be easier to put on a particle system in SFM? And to answer that question, yes. Yes, it would be easier to do that. Now let's take a step back and look at some history. For a while, I never put on unusuals onto my posters, until I figured out you can Photoshop them. Why? Because in the SFM, the unusuals look really, really ugly. I mean, in-game, I don't care, but in a poster that you want to actually look nice, having a fire completely made out of broken triangles looks kind of... Ugh. Now, even back then, I tried to make posters with simple smoke, effects with like the brush tool and the smudge tool but the reason why I draw on my posters is because my friend Miku told me I should try it because he does that better than me and I did and I thought it looks 4,000 times nicer than those low quality overlays just my opinion though you probably shouldn't think the same I mean you could but uh Sometimes the particle system can be good, but usually not with uh, unusuals. They, they kind of suck there. So while you're still in SFM, you, if you're doing an unusual effect that gives off lighting, which I'm pretty sure all of them do, you want to make it so you have it of the same lighting of the unusual affecting the model. Then when you're in Photoshop, you'll have an easier time with lighting. That way the, it looks like the unusual is actually there. Let's start off with smoothing out all the textures. If you haven't seen my other Photoshop tutorial, I covered that in that one. I use a drawing tablet, so it is a little easier for me to do all this, but I'm pretty sure even if you use a mouse, you can still do it. After that, I adjust the lighting and make it what I want in, at the end-ish. Drawing on unusual effects is actually kind of hard, but at the same time, it's really easy because it's Photoshop. So, let me explain what, what you have to do. Okay, so this is what you would do for scorching. You draw a fire and make sure that it's, you know, somewhat realistic, like it's pointy and goes in and out and all that. Then, you're not going to probably do it correctly. So, after you finish it and you fill it and stuff, you go into the liquify tool and you mess with it a lot. And, and the beauty about the liquify tool is it can make any shape without the need of too much artistic ability. So all you have to do is just play with it using the different tools a lot to make it look like it's fire. Or if you're doing something else, something else. But then, you use the smudge tool to smooth out the edges, because it's gonna look a little rough, so you can just, you know, make it all smooth, so it doesn't look weird. Now, this is all one solid color, right? So, you don't want it all to look like it's just one, one color, because then it just looks really flat. So, after you finish smoothing all of it out, we start to work on the other aspects of the effect. Also, when, it, when you finally find that general shape of what you want, use the smudge tool effects to add a little bit more detail here and there, like maybe a little cut in and just random fire flying out. And the, the easy way that I like to do it is I like the fire to be adjusted by the wind, so the wind is blowing in a certain direction, so all the fire is, you know, edging towards that way. That way, for some reason, I find it easier. I don't know if you will, but that's what I like to do. My, take your time with this. It really does take a while to get used to, but that's okay. Now that we finished it, I'm messing with the layer settings to figure out what makes what. Then I like this one because it's not completely blocky and it's a little transparent. Then I duplicate it and do the same thing and then mess with the adjustments. And I keep duplicating and duplicating and making it a different look. This is just to change the color and how the lighting passes through the layers. Then I take a lighter color than the rest of the fire and I 
go around the outer edges of the fire to make it look more three-dimensional. You can do straight lines, but I just figured out that if you make it very disconnected from each other, it gives it a certain flare look that I thought looked nice. And as you can see, it's slowly starting to turn a little bit more high quality. Then, once you're done with that, again, you take the smudge tool. By the way, as I said in the other tutorial, the smudge tool is one of your biggest helpers in this program. Because it makes everything look right. And you stretch it along the direction where it was already going, so it doesn't look like you drew it on. As you may have guessed, then you would change the layer settings to adjust how the, that effect approaches the original fire. Play with your brush settings, like the hardness and if it's like a soft brush or a hard brush. And then another thing that you should do is fire doesn't normally look like that. So you want to draw something like really white in the center or depending on what you're doing. It doesn't have to be perfect as you can see because you're just going to make it a little blurry and then you're going to go into the liquify and try to shape out what you think it'll look like. Again, take your time because you're not going to get it on the first try. Then you, you, you can use your smudge tool if you're too... if you don't like the fact that Liquify is doing a certain way. And just make it look like it's the inside of the fire effect. Then change the layer settings to get what you want. Then you can change the hue and saturation. The shortcut to this is Control u and mess with how it, it also gets affected. Then, mess with your layers to see if you can make any last minute adjustments to make it an even better effect. As you may have seen, the lighting actually is a little off, so adding a gradient with a layer effect will make it look more like it's what it is. And just mess with the opacity and what effect you're using and it'll start to look more right. Then, you do my other trick that I talked about in the other tutorial. You draw onto the layer and then you blur it and smudge it and then add layer effects to act like it's actual lighting. You also do this with small brush sizes, which I'm gonna do to outline the effects to make it look like the fire is actually there and it's setting off some lighting onto the soldier. Then you mess with that layer effects and then you smudge it out to bring it all together. Really every type of special effect I do in Photoshop is using these key effects. It takes a little while to get used to, but it's really fun and rewarding once you get used to it. Then I made it a layer above, I added the soft light effect and made some light brush strokes across it. And then I desaturated some parts of the effect because um, the way the Kabuto is coming out Anyway, that's how you make unusual effects in Photoshop. Also, I should probably mention that I hit 400 subs, and I hosted a giveaway for 300, and reached 400 before that ended. So... I'm not gonna do anything for 400, but when I hit 500, I'll do something on Twitter. Uh, links and stuff are places.